Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. I'm really excited to come uh, at Developer Puzzle Worlds at API The Docs and be able to share a bit of what we're working on. My name is Anthony. I'm a product leader working on our, on the Miro Developer Portal uh, and platform in general. And today with me, I have Mira, who is our staff technical writer, who actually built a lot of the things we're going to show you today. Uh, just for context, for so people who don't know Miro, Miro is the visual workspace that's used for innovation. It allows teams to build, iterate, and design, uh, design yeah. products, whatever they are, digital or physical products. And with Mira and the other teams in the developer platform, we're focusing on enabling developers partners uh, and angel customers to be able to build and customize and extend Miro. So our developer platform is an extension of the Miro product, allowing you to build apps and integrations. We offer a set of technical components. Um, some of them allow you to build apps within the Miro board and build like collaborative applications and experiences to have better brainstorming and in general helping you, helping teams and companies to build better products. We have a set of REST APIs, which are usually used more to build integrations and automations. And we offer as well a component we call Live Embed, allowing you to take Miro and bring Miro into other products. So you get uh, access to the visual collaboration within any uh, other web products. And today, we really wanted to focus and talk about some of the problems we've faced over the last six months and some of the things we were putting in place and we're actually still working on in trying to solve these problems. So for a bit of context, we launched the Miro developers platform uh, a year and a half ago, at least the revamp of it that we call the version two. And where at the beginning, a lot of the focus was to bring some of the basic components and experiences and the doc, we quickly realized that we're missing a couple of things. And some of the things we heard from third party developers and partners the first thing is they found that our onboarding process was complex. The fact that we offer different technical components did not make it easy for them to understand what they can build and how to build it. The other thing is to be able to actually use the platform and even discover the product and see if that can be useful. It was requiring uh, the users and developers to create a mirror account and a developer account. So that was quite a lot of frictions and barriers on the flow to what we call activation. So, having developers that show real interest in the platform and building. And we wanted to remove these uh, barriers. The other thing is not our documentation was not fully interactive. We have some parts that were interactive, some parts that were not at all, and required you to have a full setup and set up an environment and develop an environment just to be able to test and discover the product, which did not help in getting adoptions and, and activations in general. And overall, we felt that it was not fun. And some things that the constant feedback we have about the Miro product is it's a great experience. Team enjoy uh, using Miro. They love collaborates uh, together. And our developer platform was not sharing that excitement and that fun. And in order to tackle or at least start tackling these problems, we build a set of tools as part of the onboarding journey and day-to-day -day developer experience to help solve of that. And we're going to pass it now to Mira to actually demo to you uh, the new onboarding journey and the new things we have built uh, to try to solve some of these problems. So Mira, all yours. Thank you for that very insightful introduction, Anthony. Hello, everyone. Now that you have some perspective on the problems that we were trying to solve, let's take a look at the DX initiatives and solutions that we came up with. Let's get started. So here you can see our developer platform landing page. We've identified that most times, one of the first touch points for developers who are curious to build Miro apps would typically be the Miro developer platform landing page. Now, at this stage, keep in mind that these developers might not just have some curiosity, they might also not have some um, detailed information about the capabilities of the Miro developer platform. We've taken care of this by enabling developers to get started with their onboarding journey right from our landing page. Here, I'm going to click on Get Started. As you can see here, I'm directly taken to the Onboarding Essentials page. The Onboarding Essentials Guide consists of a list of topics that take the developers through a guided path, enabling them to discover, learn, and test on the go. It contains a list of practical tasks to help you learn the Miro developer platform and takes you right from making your very first web SDK call to creating your first Miro app locally. As you can see here, there are many tasks. 
Each of these tasks have a consistent structure where we include a progress bar that indicates your status or your progress so you know how much you have done and how much is left for you to complete the onboarding flow. The estimated time it takes to complete the specific task, the learning objective so you know what exactly the goal is up front, the content itself which guides you through this task in a step-by-step -step manner, and the next task that you can take to the next level of your onboarding journey for example, here, here we said that you've, okay, in this task, you've done this, and now you need to accomplish this. And you can also follow the step-by-step -step tasks here on the left pane. Last but not the least, one of our most notable innovations this year, the embedded code editor, which we built using our very own board speaker feature of the live embed technology. By leveraging the power of the new code editor with a mirror board, you can try the web SDK directly from the developer portal, enjoying a fully integrated experience. This way, you can learn and practice right from within the documentation itself. This also makes the developer journey as easy and frictionless as possible. What's really remarkable here is that you don't need anything at all. No prior knowledge of any Miro capabilities, no registration, no Miro account, you don't even need a Miro developer team. Yes, you heard that right. You can discover, explore, and try out stuff right from the get-go. This literally means that you can make your first web SDK request with just one click. So now, enough of the talking. Let's see this in action. I just created create, I just clicked on create board and created a board here. Now let's try to run the code. This is the sample code that's already provided and I'm just gonna run it as is. And as you can see with a single click, it uh, created a sticky note with all the defaults here. Now what's really cool here is we can also update. We can, now we can use this as our playground. We can update this. For example, let's change the fill color to blue. Let's change the text of the sticky note to hello. And let's click run. And there you go. The sticky note color has changed to blue and it's saying hello to every one of you. All right, so um, now what we wanna do here is we can also, for example, change the location. You can try, you can try out different things and just explore as much as you want. And there we see it. Additionally, when you have a Miro account, you can select an existing board on your account to learn how to use the web SDK from any board that you prefer. You can also try out the code samples in our web SDK reference documentation in exactly the same way. This makes the journey to discover, test, and learn as seamless as possible. Next up on what I'd like to share with you all today is the part where we add a bit more fun and interactivity in the learning process in the form of a challenge. Here you can see the Where's Miro scavenger hunt. During this challenge, developers use the Miro Web SDK to uncover hidden secrets on a Miro board, navigating thousands of board elements and images. By following the instructions on this challenge, developers can practice and test the necessary skills needed to become an experienced Miro app developer. A bonus, as you complete the challenge, you earn a badge, and we will take a look at what badges are all about in just a few minutes. Now that we've seen what you can do without having an account, let's transition to the notable innovations we've done to enhance the developer experience once you do have a Miro account. So I'm going to switch. And here we are. I have logged on already to the developer portal with my own Miro account. And here it is, everyone. I am very proud and lucky to present on behalf of the team, the Miro Developer Hub. The Miro Developer Hub is a dedicated one-stop shop that streamlines the developer experience to help developers build apps faster. The Miro Developer Hub consolidates all the information we know developers are looking for, right from onboarding and training materials to progress tracking, example and demo apps, app management, and more. This way, developers can spend less time looking for guidance and more time learning the most relevant information and building apps. 
you can customize your page by reordering the sections from the left pane. So let's say you want to change uh, the order here and you want to put the badges at the top. As you can see here, I just had to drag the sections and I can change it to customize based on my needs. I will put it back. Now let's take a quick look at each of these areas, starting from the guides. With the guide section, it's no longer necessary to dig through introductory guides and tutorials. You can launch different guides as you go on with your onboarding journey in just a single click. It also makes it easier to track your learning and the progress you've made so far. As you can see here, I know that I've already completed the onboarding essentials guide. I'm about 75% through the submit and share your app guide, and I can plan what I want to learn and explore next. Moving forward, remember about the badge I mentioned earlier when we had a look at the challenge? This is it. We've introduced a gamified experience that makes onboarding fun by keeping track of your achievements and adding incentives in the form of badges to encourage learning. Almost every milestone you unlock is rewarded with a badge. This ups the level of the enthusiasm, motivation, and a sense of accomplishment while you are on your learning path. Next up is the section where we help developers create an app by using an example. There are several app examples to choose from, each with source code you can download to get started. We've also provided a search feature that you can use to narrow down the app examples to suit your requirements. For example, you can search for apps that use the Web SDK by simply typing Web SDK in the search bar. You can view the source code on GitHub or download the example app source code. The really cool thing here is that you can create an app using that example app configuration settings in just a few clicks. Yes, that's right. You don't have to write a single line of code or perform any configuration at all. Let's quickly see this in action. And what I'll do now is I'll click on the register icon. I will give the app a name and I will click create app. And as you see here, the app has been created with all the default settings that you need for your app. When I go back to the developer hub, I will click refresh. And here in my app list, I can see the test app that I just created now. If you'd like to go a step further, you can also explore and add your personal touch to these examples by editing the source code that you downloaded. Now let's move on to the your app section. You can search, view, manage existing apps, or even create a new app from scratch right from the developer hub itself. So yes. The Developer Hub is indeed a power-packed one-stop shop that takes you from being a, probably a curious developer to a developer that has created apps and also taking the developer experience to the next level. With that, we conclude our demo for the DX innovation that we've done thus far. Thank you for your time and interest, and over to you, Anthony. Cool. Thank you, Amira. Just before closing it up and taking on if you have any questions, we wanted to tell you a bit more the things we have in mind or the things we are considering doing next. There are things we're already working on and things that's really top of our, top of our mind. We know that uh, we just started solving the problem and we want to bring better automations, better recommendations, and just making the developer experience in general better. The first thing we're working on right now is to allow to get access directly to app metrics right away from the developer hub. So the idea here, the model developers are building on top of the Miro developer platforms want to enhance Miro. Whatever they are trying to solve a problem with the team or the company, they are trying to build apps for the marketplace or even trying to build a business. And being able to understand how users consume the app, what are the different uh, usage drop rate, uh, installation and installation and so on is really key for them. So that's one of the next things we're going to bring on, which will allow anybody who's building apps to get access live to uh, to their metrics. The second one, Mira showed that in one click, you can create a new developer app and having it fully configured. The part that we're not doing today is actually host that app. So in one single click, developers not only create a developer app and can then check out the code and, and run it, but actually in a single click, get the whole environment set up and they can actually test and explore and learn uh, with almost no frictions. And we've seen very inspiring companies uh, demoed that last year uh, at this exact conference and 
we really want to, to bring that to the market. The last one, I think it was related to one of the questions in the chat, is the content you see at the top of the developer hub is quite static today. What we like to bring is what we call smart content engine. The idea is the developer onboarding journey, what developers build is very different, but we have ways by using um, Google Analytics data and developer portal data to, and the usage of the APIs to understand, or at least try to understand what we're going to build, what we are building, to recommend them the right content. Let's say that if you see someone has created an account, has made the few first API calls uh, from the reference documentation, and they stop there, you could recommend them the right next, the right guide to help them to continue. If they started creating content on the board and like specific items on a mirror board, you could have a guide helping them to be specialized on the REST API side, helping them to better understand how to automate the process they are trying to do. And we really want to have that, that's your journey. We kind of take your hand, the hand of the developers, and we take them on a journey when we help them to focus on what matters and help them to build the applications association they want as fast as possible. Um, all of that is on our plans. Hopefully next year we'll be able to demo some of that. But yeah, thank you very much, Mira, for the demo. Hope that was useful for you and we'll be very happy to take any questions you have. And if you want to explore, we added a couple of links here um, if you want to learn more about what we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the links, would you also put them into the general chat, please? And someone was asking whether the Mara board that you were showing is publicly available, if they can have a look at that. It is. I just shared the board on the, right. on the chat, so everybody should be able to access it. I'm already foreseeing the hackathons you're going to be running with this. <laughs> Who's currently um, your, your, uh, your main audience? Who's mostly so visiting? It's a very good question. We have very different personas, and that's what makes it quite difficult to tailor the experiences to them. You can think about, we have what we call public builders and private builders. If you think about the public builders, they are developers that are building to distribute the solutions through the marketplace. And then what we call the private builders, it's most of the time our own customers. Think about any company that wants to automate their own processes or connect Miro to their workflows. Uh, their journey, uh, in discovering, building, and solving problems or their needs is quite different. But even within these categories, there are a lot of different personas. If we take the public builders, you're going to have an indie developers that might be interesting to just solve a problem, his own problem, his friend's problem, learn and explore because it's cool, or build a CV and find a job. While we have as well uh, marketplace builders or what we call solution partners, they are very established companies that are making a business uh, of building apps and setting apps. Because by building on Miro and distributing for a marketplace, they get access to the 60 million Miro users and they can build established uh, sustainable businesses uh, on top of that by monetizing their apps, monetizing their services and expertise. They can be building apps and running workshops and training, facilitating agile processes and brainstorming. Um, so we have quite a, a large uh, variety of builders. And obviously we cannot solve. So what we try to build is an open platform. Anybody can come and use it. There is no limitations. There's no barrier to entry. It's actually free of charge, but we need to focus. So usually we work quarter by quarter or half year by half year. We pick a persona and we're trying to solve the most important needs of that persona. Mm -hmm. And then that has to align as well with the company goals and what we're trying to solve. So you could see that. Some of the things we have built here might be tailored more to public builders and more like um, indie developers. Some of the work we're planning for the next quarter are tailored more to established companies that have different needs, like being able to build enterprise ready solutions to sell to the companies. Uh, so yeah, we're quite different personas to serve. Do you even try to do any kind of SEO? We, we try to. I'll say that's maybe one thing we're not doing super well, uh, or we could do better, like but we try. <laughs> yeah. we try. Yeah. One hard. of the KPI that we, we monitor, and um, Max, I think, talked about it before, is what we call activation. That's mm -hmm. quite an important KPI for us. We see a very high correlation between the number of activated developers, so people developers that show a really interest in the product, and number of apps that are launched to our marketplace. And getting a more active, building a more active ecosystem and marketplace is one of our, our, our key um, targets. Mm -hmm. So activation is quite important for us. Mm -hmm. And SEO is obviously driving that. Is there a way a user could bookmark or save um, 
documentation pages in the, the first the learning system that Mira was showing to view that then in the developer hub dashboard. Do you want to take this one, Mira, or do you want me to answer? Uh, you can go ahead. I'm just answering another question on the chat. Okay. Uh, no, unfortunately, today it's not possible. I think it's a great idea. I love how we do that. Today, as I said, the content you see, the links and the guides at the top, it's quite static. Um, so there is no way, it's not automatically updated. We do these updates and there's no way for users to be able to bookmark them. So all of them are linked to pages on the developer portal that they can bookmark. But if they bookmark that, it does not appear in their hub. That would be very cool. They can build their own profiles and being able to bookmark that. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Because you're sort of going that way. How did uh, how did Myra build their developer onboarding experience? Was it based on literature, customer research, um, full fight in the UX club at Myro? How do you do this? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, there was a bit of what everything we build, we do, we follow quite a product oriented mindset. Actually, all of this, we sit under the product organization. So we the first thing we always do is what we call discovery. And discovery uh, includes looking at what, defining the problem areas, doing a market analysis and market research, or what seems to be the state of the art, or what other companies are doing. Um, then we define what success looks like for us and the goals. And we don't define solutions at that moment. We define just what we want to solve. And after that, we partner, we usually have a team of PMs, tech writers, developer advocates, and engineers. And that's where they start designing a couple of solutions uh, based on what they learn in the discovery. And we pick the one that is what we think has the highest uh, ROI, basically. The one that is doable in less than a quarter, that's kind of our, our rule, and in which we can start learning and iterating on. And that will uh, drive us or drive the KPI we picked or why we decided that initiative. So actually, for this one, we had a product designer, many developer advocates, and a tech writers who built it. Mm -hmm. And it's an iteration. We, we monitor every step, uh, every task is monitored, how many people achieve it, when they drop, uh, and we're able to iterate on that um, quite mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you connecting the experience of a regular user to that the, in, in the documentation, if at all? I'm not sure I understand the question. How are you connecting the experience of a regular user to the documentation? Oh, I guess a regular Miro user uh, to the experience on the, the developer hub. Maybe that's the question. OK. Um, well, the first thing is, out of the 60 million users of Miro, very few actually builders and developers, right? It's a very uh, small category of that because we have a lot of functions using Miro. The way it works is actually we implemented the login button you see on the developer portal uses cookies of your Miro account. So as long as you're logged in to Miro using Chrome, for example, we will know you're logged into Miro, so we'll log you in automatically to the developer portal. The only step that's different is creating what we call a developer account. So we create for the people who are familiar with Miro, Miro is organized by, per team. That's what we call. And we have a specific team, which is the developer environment. We basically do that to create a safe sandbox, but as well a free environment. So you don't need to pay for Miro to be able to develop and use it. Um, so that's the only step which is additional to your Miro account. But just with the Miro account, you could log in on developer portal. Uh, you will be able to use most of the product as Mira showed. We actually, uh, we simulate and we create uh, anonymous accounts for you. So you don't need to do all of that. But the moment you really want to start building an app and accessing to all our components, that's where you need to create a developer team. So Miro account is the same across the product and the developer platform. But to be able to have a developer environment, you need to create an additional thing inside your Miro account. Mm -hmm. And then you already answered the other question with this as well. Um, allow me for one last question um, uh, from, from Mira, probably. Um, as a technical writer, uh, responsible for yeah the docs and the accuracy of the docs. Did you need to um, perform any kind of mindset change or perspective change or any fundamental change in the way your mind map is on how the documentation comes together for the developer hub? Yeah, I would say many times. So um, from the first time that we um, started, right, uh, we had a different getting started guide. And then we changed that mindset where we had an onboarding guide now with an embedded code editor. And then so what should the content that should be in there? The goal is the same, 
um, but we tried to make it more um, easier, frictionless and seamless for the developers. So I would say that you really need to put yourself into, so there are different stages, right? Our first version of the developer portal when we just went beta and GA, whereas when you see it now, I would say that it's a different mindset for each of those. Yeah, you have to really um, try to think about how does this content enable the developer to go a step further? How does it engage them? How does it make them learn and discover things and also be able to explore and get them interested? So the developer hub also makes it um, much more interesting because now it's gamified. They can achieve badges. We didn't have all these things earlier. So I would say yes. It's, it's a big mindset change as well. Um, having the same goal and audience in mind, but having less friction. Mm -hmm. And the way the documentation is in, in units, did mm -hmm. the granularity of it change to smaller or bigger? Uh, it changed to smaller, wherein we had smaller um, tasks and smaller goals. Um, we did have uh, bigger guides earlier, which we had to um, cut down. Mm -hmm and kind of like reorganize the content. Mm -hmm. And Jackie is saying that the gamification stuff is awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much.